Hey guys, in this video I'm going to present USA Math Olympiad 2024 Problem 6. First, let's take a look at the problem statement. We are given n greater than 2 and another positive integer l less than or equal to n. Now, we consider positive integers k and non-negative real coefficients x1 up to xk and subsets a1 up to ak of 1 up to n each having size at least L, and we consider the inequality that the sum over all i of the sum over all j of xi xj times the intersection of ai and aj squared divided by size of ai times size of aj should be greater than or equal to c times the sum over all i of xi all squared. We shall find the largest possible constant c, depending on n and l, such that this inequality always holds for any choice of k of the xi and ai. We are going to use a general approach that is very important to understand if you want to deal with identities involving intersections of sets. The idea, which I had seen before somewhere else, is to consider for any p in 1 up to n, a set which I will abbreviate with bracket n, the function g of p defined by the sum of i going from 1 to k such that p lies in ai of xi divided by the size of ai. So if we think of xi as the weight of the set ai, then we are evenly distributing the weight of any set ai onto its members. Therefore, we can evaluate the sum of all p of g of p. More rigorously, this is equal to the sum of i going from 1 to k of the sum of p in ai of xi divided by the size of ai. And all of this is equal to the sum of i going from 1 to k of xi. We can relate g of p to intersections of ai by considering g of p squared, which is equal to the sum of i going from 1 to k with p in ai, of the sum of j from 1 to k with p in aj, of xi xj divided by size of ai times the size of aj. So the sum of g of p squared is equal to the sum of i and j going from 1 to k of the sum of p in the intersection of ai and aj, since p has to lie in both ai and aj here, of that expression xi xj divided by size ai times the size of aj. All inner summons are equal and so we can write this as the sum of all i and j of xi xj times the intersection of ai aj divided by the size of ai times the size of aj. This expression looks almost like our left hand side and remember that the sum of the gp was the sum xi which resembles the right side. Therefore, using the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality or AMQM, we can indeed obtain an inequality between these two expressions, which would be nice if we had a square here. So the first challenge we have to deal with is how do we introduce a square here? I was pretty confused at this point, but in hindsight, I can nicely explain for how we want to modify the approach. Namely, this ai intersect aj comes from our sum over p in ai intersect aj. So to square this quantity, we would want to sum over such p and then have a second sum over all q in ai intersect aj. This is why we want to introduce a function g of pq for p and q in bracket n, which is defined simply as the sum over all i going from 1 to k, such that p and q both lie in ai of xi divided by the size of ai. Let's note that g of pp is simply g of p, which is nice because this means we can recycle our previous 
calculations later. But what we are really interested in is the sum of g of p and q squared. Instead of a sum over p and a i intersection a j, we are now going to sum over all tuples p and q in that set, which will then give us precisely an a i intersected with a j squared here. And so this is indeed the left hand side of our inequality. If we now want to lower bound this using amqm, we obtain a term involving the sum of all p and q in n of g of p comma q. This is equal to the sum of i going from 1 to k of xi divided by size of ai times the number of pairs p and q lying in ai, which is equal to ai squared. Now remember that we want to use amqm to lower bound the left hand side by this sum. Therefore, we are interested in further lower bounding the sum of i going from 1 to k, xi size of ai. And here we can crucially use the fact that all those sets have at least L elements, which implies that this is greater than or equal to L times the sum xi. This already gives us a bound of the desired form because by amqm the sum over all pq of g pq squared is greater than or equal to 1 over n squared, this is the number of summons here, times the sum of g pq all squared. By the green inequality this is greater than or equal to l squared divided by n squared times the sum of xi all squared. So we have proven that c can at least be taken as l squared divided by n squared. Let's see if we can prove the corresponding upper bound on c, which entails finding k, xi and ai such that equality holds with the corresponding c. My first attempt was to choose k as large as possible such that the ai can be chosen disjoint such that all non-diagonal terms right here are zero. Unfortunately, we can only choose k as the floor of n divided by l here, which is quite small, and therefore in this case, the diagonal terms, which will not vanish at all, will contribute quite a lot to the sum. There's another more Olympiad-oriented reason for why this construction is not very nice, namely that it involves the floor of n over l, and we know that we will be able to find the optimal c. So we would hope for a nicer expression coming out of our construction. The best way to deal with the first problem is to simply take the ai as all possible l element subsets of 1 up to n and xi all equal 1. So we will have some non-zero intersections, which is not too bad because small intersections contribute very little due to the square. The sum on the right hand side of all xi is simply k, which is equal to n choose l. Evaluating this sum, namely our left hand side directly, is a nightmare. Fortunately, we already know that this is equal to the sum of g of p, comma q squared, which looks more promising. Since all ai have sized precisely l, we can factor out a 1 divided by l squared here. And then we have two cases, namely for p and q equal, we have exactly n minus 1 choose l minus 1 sets containing p. So we get this quantity squared. And for distinct p and q, we have to count the number of sets containing p and q here and square this number as well. Now there are n summons here and n times n minus 1 remaining summons. Finally, we want to factor out n choose l all squared. Since n choose l equals n minus 1 choose l minus 1, the first summand here is equal to 1 over n times that factor. Moreover, n choose l is equal to n minus 2 choose l minus 2 times n times n minus 1 divided by l times l minus 1. Therefore, the second summand here has an l minus 1 squared divided by n times n minus 1. In conclusion, we obtain that c is at most this value, so we can write c less than or equal 
1 over n plus l minus 1 squared divided by n times n minus 1. This is kind of sad because this upper bound doesn't match our previously determined lower bound on c. At least this second term looks kind of similar to l squared over n squared, so let's investigate where in our proof we lose something in the bounds if we plug in these quantities. We only really use that the AI have size at least L, which is tight here indeed, and we used AMQM or Cauchy-Schwarz at this step. Indeed, we don't have equality here because not all G of P, Q terms are equal. This is precisely what we saw here, where we split onto the diagonal case and the non-diagonal case. So let's apply AMQM to the diagonal and non-diagonal terms separately here to obtain that this is greater than or equal to 1 over the number of diagonal entries n times the sum of GPP all squared plus 1 over n times n minus 1 times the sum of P not equal to Q of GPQ all squared. Now we are in really good shape because these denominators look familiar from our upper bound on C. In the very first step of this video, we found out that the sum of GPP is equal to the sum of i going from 1 to k of xi. To bound the sum of non-diagonal terms, we have to look at the green inequality and now restrict to the case that p is not equal to q. Therefore, for any ai, we count ai squared minus ai many pairs of elements in this sum, so that this is equal to the sum of xi times ai minus 1. Therefore, we obtain the lower bound l minus 1 times the sum of xi. Plugging this in below, we obtain that all of this is greater than or equal to that quantity plus 1 over n times n minus 1 times l minus 1 squared times the sum of xi all squared. 1 over n plus l minus 1 squared divided by n times n minus 1 exactly matches our upper bound on c and therefore this is indeed an equality. So we have found the best possible value of c depending on n and l and therefore we are done.